Alright y'all, so today, technically speaking, I'm talking about June favorites, but because I'm pre-filming so many videos to get ready for vacation, I have no idea when this video is going to go live. It may be halfway through July, and then, you know, that doesn't really make sense. So we're just going to title it favorites, and that way no one will ever know if I hadn't just said something. So y'all know I usually like to start these videos out talking about less tangible items, things that aren't so materialistic. I like to finish up with those. But I usually like to touch on things that have happened to me in the last month of life and also books that I've read. Uh, unfortunately, nothing has happened to me in this last month. So actually, let's go ahead and talk about the book I'm currently reading. I'm about three quarters of the way done and I don't need to finish it to know that I love it. This is the fourth, fifth time I have read Eat, Pray, Love. I have a tradition now where I read this book every single year right before I go to Maui and it just puts me in a really great headspace, heart space. Like it's just, this is like a religious book to me. I know it sounds silly. I'm not trying to compare anything to the Bible, but like if it brings you closer to God, I don't think God's going to be pissed off about it. Anyways, I love this book. Love it. It's almost cliche. I know it is. Um, but, oh man, it's so good if you haven't read it. I I'm sure most people in this world have, but if you haven't, I'm telling you, I love that book. So let's talk about some books that I read on my Kindle. I bought this one long before I had a Kindle. I've even thought about just downloading it, buying it again to have it, but I love, I love this specific paper bag. So I read two books by Gil Paul. One was a very short story. I read it in like 30 minutes. It was called We Sink or Swim Together. It was a short love story based on the Lusitania. It was like 99 cents. Why not? I do like the author. Um, but the main book that I read of his is The Secret Wife. Needless to say, I really needed a happy book, an uplifting book. After reading that, it depressed me. It was good. It was really good, but you know how so many of those good books can make you really sad too. And I've said this before, but I don't have like a good filter to block that stuff out. Like it gets inside me. When I read something sad, I feel such empathy for those characters that it makes me depressed in my everyday life. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Anyway, so The Secret Wife. Set in Russia, early 20th century, right before the revolution, the Bolshevik Revolution. And it is based around the Tsar and his family, the royal family, the Romanovs. You know, like Anastasia supposedly escaped. Anyways, except in The Secret Wife, Tatiana, the second daughter, is the main character. I've always been fascinated by the Romanovs. I don't know. I was in elementary school and I read a book about them. I think about Anastasia. Actually, it may have been that Disney movie, too. I knew, I know I used to love that. The song, Once Upon a December, oh, I still have it on my phone, actually. Anyway, so the secret is that Tatiana kind of runs away to marry the love of her life, who is a soldier in the Russian army, and just their story throughout the years. And I bawled my eyes out at the end. Bawled my eyes out. It makes me want to cry just thinking about it. I don't want to spoil anything, but I laid in my bed reading the end of this book and cried my heart out. It was so good. It was really good, but it is so sad too. It's happy and sad, I guess. Then right before that, I read The Girl with a Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier. Obviously, you know, The Girl with a Pearl Earring is one of Vermeer's most famous portraits. Absolutely just stunning. And it took me a while to get into that book. It was really short. I will tell you that much. I read it really quick. But it is kind of a fictionalized story based on the girl who Vermeer painted, the girl in the painting, and then his life and his wife and his children and just like the whole family structure there. The girl was his maid, but also his muse. And I will tell you, it's very reminiscent of the painting because while I was reading this, I, you know, I kept thinking like, this is not the best book ever. This is not the most beautifully written, like, but I love it. I can't stop reading it. Why do I love it? Why am I so invested? And I'm like, oh, duh, it's just like the painting. The girl is not the most beautiful creature you've ever seen. She's not like just absolutely stunningly beautiful. That's not why he painted her. But yet she's still so beautiful that you can't look away. Then right before that, this one took me a while to read. It's The Other Boleyn Girl by Philippa, Philippa, Gregory. Um, very, again, famous book. She has a bunch in this series. I thought about downloading them. Then I was like, uh, I don't know if I'm up for that task. 
So the other Boleyn girl is based around Mary Boleyn, who was first King Henry's mistress, supposedly had two children by him, and then her sister, Anne Boleyn, who ended up becoming queen. And just the rival, Anne is such a freaking bitch in this book that I like couldn't wait to the part where she gets beheaded. And lastly, I want to mention Marlena, about Marlena Dietrich by C.W. Gordner. I thought I had mentioned this last month in my favorites video, but I'm pretty sure it was just some random video I have to talk about it in or like a live stream or something so I just want to officially mention it here the best book I have read in so long it is hot it is graphic it is sexy Marlena Dietrich was out of the closet as a bisexual and this book gets into it and oh my god I'm telling you like one of the best summer reads but there's also so much more there about like you know 1920s Berlin which was just I mean crazy it really was and then obviously going through the war she was German dealing with all that um, I don't know I don't want to spoil anything but my god that book was hot but more so than that, it was a really good story too. So this quote is my favorite and it's from one of Marlena's lovers and Marlena's like sleeping with four people at the same time. Anyways, uh, so really Marlena, two men and both such mediocre actors. I don't know whether to be more insulted by your relish for these imbroglios or your appalling taste in dick. And then this last part really isn't a quote, it's just a good part from the book where she runs into Ernest Hemingway, who she's friends with, longtime friends with. And there's this woman there, like this journalist or something, who's trying, who's having an affair with him, but trying to get him to leave his second wife at the time. And so, anyways, Marlena has like parasites. She's been out in the field entertaining the Allied troops. And she, yeah, she got like dysentery. She has lice all over her, like pubic lice. And so when Marlena leaves, she offers, she has a bigger bed than this woman. And so she offers her bed to her and makes sure there's like lice in it. And so she like gets her back for trying to make him leave his wife. Anyway, I'm telling you that book was so good. I loved it. I would like read it again. I may, maybe I'll read it again while I'm in Maui. So I need book recommendations. I know y'all give them to me every month. Keep them coming because I can't tell you how many books I'm gonna go through. I think I went through either eight or nine books last year and that was only in three weeks of being, that's, that's what I do all day. I lay by the pool and read, that's how I relax. And so I go through a book like every day and a half if it's real short every three days max and so I turn through them I already made a wish list I have a big list there's a lot of good new releases for summer um, but if you have any you recommend let me know now I do have a couple of products to mention but really not that much which I guess it's fine with me I kind of thought maybe it was a little bit pointless but I'm going to mention the couple that I do have. I haven't really been buying a lot, bringing a lot of stuff in, and that's a good thing. So my friend Vida from Lithuania sent me a little care package, and she included two lip products. The lip oil from Gosh, I spoke about it in an earlier video, and then this lip balm. I am taking this to Hawaii with me. It is so good. Please don't ask me to say any other writing here on the packaging. I can't do it. Although she did tell me that this means kiss me. I guess I really only have one last thing to mention and that is the Sigma brush cleansing mat. So I love this. This mousse works so much better to clean my brushes than what I had been using. And the fact that it sticks in my sink and I don't have to hunch over and like hold something in my hand. Well, I have to hold my brush, but it's, it's just so much easier on my back and my back would always get worn out after hunching over for an hour and a half cleaning my brushes. So I love this. This is also the small one, the one they call Express, but I mean, it's plenty big enough. I can't imagine the big ones probably like bigger than my sink. I've also been playing word cookies. I am not like a freemium game. I'm not like a cell phone gamer at all, but I've really been enjoying it. I highly recommend. This is not sponsored. It's not like Best Fiends. I feel like it's very educational and keeps my mind going. You know, I'm learning new words. <laughs> Anyways, that was my favorites video for the last month. I am going to run. I love y'all so much. See you in a couple of days, hopefully. And uh, don't ever forget, it is perfectly okay to just be small town famous. Love y'all.